Good morning, everyone. How's it going? Excellent. Thank you all for coming out this morning. I know it's hard to show up for anything in the morning in Vegas, so appreciate it. Um, it, it yep, we're one after, so let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, scooch this in and grab this little guy, and hope it works. Fingers crossed. Let's see. So in case you're not, uh, just to make sure you're in the right place, this is a session for the VMware Cloud Director Lab. Uh, it's a you know, VCD 101 kind of stuff. Uh, we have another one on Cloud Director availability that we did yesterday and we have on Thursday, but uh, this is the Cloud Director Lab. So uh, we'll, we'll go through, talk about us, talk about the lab, and then we'll just have you all dive in and take the lab I'll run through the lab on my own up here, but we're not going to go slide by slide. We'll let everyone kind of go at their own pace. As I'm going through it, as I see things that I think I might want to call out to your attention, I'll bring those up just so you all you know, are aware of it. Also, uh, it, as you're going through the labs, if you have questions, just let us know and we can come around and answer them or yell them out. We'll, we'll figure it out. All right, so I am Eric Stein. Uh, I've been with VMware since 2007. Just recently had my 16 year anniversary. Uh, and so in that time I've covered various regions and market segments uh, and back in 2016, I moved over to our cloud provider team. And so if you all are familiar with our cloud provider team, we've gone through many names over the years, VSPP, VKN, VCPP, now it's VCSP Cloud Builders because that rolls off the tongue so nicely. Um, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun, and, and so I've been on this team the longest stretch of all my various teams uh, at VMware, and it, yeah, I've been enjoying it. So I've been working with various cloud partners over the years, uh, small ones, big ones, all over the place. Lots of fun. Uh, early on, uh, when I, uh, you know, shortly after I started, uh, we had a project internally in Austin where we were trying to. Uh, you know, figure out how to make, uh, we were using Lab Manager at the time, uh, to basically make a multi-machine configuration to show off vSphere. And uh, that platform you know, eventually moved into VCD uh, when VCD came out and replaced Lab Manager. And that concept has kind of evolved into what we're using for the hands-on labs today. So when you're taking hands-on labs, it's really just a V app in VCD. And so all of the labs that people are taking are all just a bunch of vApps in VCD, and they're clones from templates. So it's kind of cool, you know, like watching your kids grow up. And my co-captain, Perul. Everyone, good morning, and hope you're enjoying the show. My name is Parul, and I have been with VMware since 2006. So yes, I also completed my 16th year anniversary at VMware. Uh, I have been part of the R&D engineering group. Uh, so I have, all these years at VMware, I have worked on a variety of products like vSphere application, SRM, vSphere networking, and most recently over the past few years, I've been working on different, uh, the vSAN. So I have worked on vSAN USA, ESA, and now, you know, the latest features of the vSAN ESA. So as part of HOL, I work with Eric to develop this VCDA lab. Of course, he's the subject matter expert for VCD. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, it's been great working with Eric as developing this lab. So feel free to you know, ask the questions while we traverse this um, workshop. Um, I think we can get started. Okay, thank you. All right, so let's talk about the lab itself a bit. Um, in years past, I would have uh, two different, uh, we call them pods, it's a V app, but uh, back when we, we did that uh, project, uh, we jokingly called it a V pod because marketing was putting a V in front of everything and it stuck, you know, uh, things happen. So uh, we still call them V pods internally, but really when you look at it, it's really just a V app and VCD. Uh, in years past, I would have two different pods, one for the VCD lab and one for the VCDA lab, the Cloud Director Availability. And this year I decided to merge them into one giant pod. And so as you can see, 
2.8 terabytes of storage and uh, almost 260 gigs of RAM. Uh, so the, uh, the core team that has to copy these out to our various clouds and spin them up whenever we do things like this, they love me. So, but yeah, it's, uh, well, kind of got, you know, two of everything for the, uh, the vSphere side. So we have, for the cloud director availability, we have to have uh, site A and site B for replication and failover. Uh, but also, uh, in this lab, you know, I have a VCD site A and site B, not just for the cloud director availability, but also so uh, you can you know, play with multi-site in VCD. Uh, so both labs kind of had that, so that was easy. Um, but you know, adding new components in here in the VCDA one in the past, I you know had a mix of NSX V and T. Well, V doesn't exist anymore, so now it's just T. Um, added the uh, NSX Advanced Load Balancer, uh, formerly known as Avi. People still call it Avi, so if, if you call it Avi, I know what you're talking about. Um, and then added, uh, you know, Ops, Chargeback, uh, Login Site. Uh, so uh, marketing-wise, we we're calling them ARIA Ops and ARIA Operations for Logs. But when I installed them and built this lab many months ago, the monikers and the products were still, you know, VROPS and VROLIZE uh, log insight. So in the manual, we call that out and then we just go based on what the screen says. So it's not confusing for y'all. Um, and so uh, some of the, you know, fun parts. Oh, yeah, and then of course, cloud director availability is in there as well. Uh, some of the fun parts, of course, you know, getting all this into one giant pod. As you know, more moving parts you have, the more areas you have where things might break. Um, but we got it all going nice and smooth. There are, uh, you know, because we have one giant pod now, you can do certain things that we weren't able to do before. Like the old VCDA pod didn't have ops running in there. So you couldn't play with the management pack for uh, VCDA when it came out. Well, now you can't, it's in there. We don't have anything in the lab, you know, calling it out, walking you through it, but just know that it's there and feel free to play with it. Not during the session, but you know. Uh, when you're, it, also the way the labs work, uh, I don't know if y'all are familiar with this, it, each module in each of our labs is meant to be standalone. Uh, and so, you know, you can take the labs as many times as you want, take as many labs as you want. But when you go in, you can just jump to a module and do that module. Like if you just want to do module three, you can do that and come back the next day, do module one. Yeah, so you don't have to just go in order one through six. All right, so um, as far as uh, our lab, I had to take the screenshot and submit the thing before we had all the modules published, but we actually do have uh, all the, uh, the modules you know, published now, actually. Here, I'll just do this. So a couple things. Uh, if you just search 2482, uh, then you should see there are three labs. There's uh, the Lightning Lab. The uh, Lightning Lab is a short lab. It's really a shortened version of module two of the uh, Dash 01 lab. Uh, and it's really meant to show the uh, tenant aspect of a user logging in and consuming resources from VCD. So I built that really so my cloud partners might be able to use it to train their customers that aren't familiar with the VCD user interface. So that's the uh, the Lightning Lab there. It's meant, and our, all of our Lightning Labs are meant to be 30 minutes or less. So you know, if you have short time and you're looking at our labs and you just want to knock one out really quickly, Lightning Labs are a good way to go. Then you have the VCD 101 lab. This is the one we're focusing on today. And then as I mentioned, uh, the Cloud Director Availability Lab is the other one. And they, all three of these are using that same pod that has all of the moving parts in there. So if you spin up any one of these, uh, you'll have the same pod with all the same moving parts. So if you dive in and you want to play with it, uh, you know, it, you'll get the same pod if you spin up any one of those. For today, of course, in this session, we're going to focus on uh, the VCD 101, and then here are the actual uh, modules that are published now. Uh, 
And so we're going to focus on module one today, but as I mentioned earlier, you can come back, you know, take self-paced labs, uh, you can take all the other modules in no particular order. And uh, also these labs will be published uh, out to the public site, usually a couple weeks after the show. So we go through this uh, big dev cycle leading up to the show every year. So I mean, we started back in March, I think. So it takes a while to get everything you know, ironed out and tested. We do a lot of test events to make sure everything is gonna you know, work beautifully for y'all when we get here. And then after the show, we publish them out on the main public site. So these will all be available for you. Also, side note, because I work with our cloud partners, um, I build the lab in such a way that I can use it when I'm working with my cloud partners. So I use it for test dev, uh, troubleshooting, you know, POC, demos, and my, you know, I do that for me, but my hope is that, you know, you know, our partners and customers can use it for the same thing. So it's a lot faster and easier to just spin up a copy of the lab to test something rather than going and installing the software in your own environment just to test one little small thing. Or if you want to break something, a lot easier to break something here where then you can just hit end and it gets deleted uh, rather than doing it in your own environment. So hopefully that's useful for you all. All right, um, so I think we can just dive in now. Uh, so if you don't already have it up, bring up uh, 01. And like I mentioned, we're going to do module one. Oh wait, there is that navigation page I was going to show you all. There we go. Let's throw that up there. Okay, so when you log into the lab, if you haven't taken a lab before, the manual pops up on the right-hand side of your screen. And to navigate between the different modules, like I told you earlier, you can jump between modules. The way you do that is you click this little hamburger menu and you get the table of contents pop up. And you just click on one of the you know, modules, in this case we're gonna do module one, and then it'll take you to that in your manual page. So later, whenever you'll take the lab, if you wanna jump between different modules, that's the way to do it. And then, uh, yeah, and now let's just dive in and take the lab. So while y'all are taking the lab, if you have any questions, just wave your hand and uh, Pearl will come over and help you. If it's something that we should you know, share with the group, we will. If you're embarrassed and you don't want us to share with the group, we can do that as well. Uh, but what I'll do is I'm going to start going through the lab up here. And, you know, like I said earlier, if I run across areas that I think, you know, I want to point out to y'all anything that you know, might be questionable. Sometimes, especially depending on your screen resolution, there are sections where you'll have to scroll to actually get to it. And we usually try to call that out in the manual, um, but it, you know, it's hard to tell exactly what, because screen res resolutions change. So uh, go ahead and dive into the lab, and I'm gonna get started up here and just let us know if you have any questions as you're going through. Uh, one thing to note, I tried to um, pre-populate all the passwords to make life as easy for you, so you know, less chance of anybody mistyping anything. Um, sometimes the one that's pre-populated isn't the one the manual is calling for. If you just click it, you'll see a pop-up of all the cached credentials. If the cached credential isn't there, it's uh, because it works best due to UI reasons that if you type it out but most of them should be in there pre-populated for you in the cache. Another thing, I, I, uh, we call it out in certain parts of the manual, uh, but uh, in order to get more screen real estate, sometimes it's easier if you minimize the recent tasks, and that's this little double blue arrow in the lower right-hand corner. So if you want to see the recent tasks, of course, you can just pop it up, but. Uh, to get a little more screen real estate, you can minimize that. and makes things a little easier to see. On uh, step 17, where you're looking at the uh, network diagram, uh, I built this one out uh, showing the VMs connecting to different networks just to give you an idea of you know, how creative you can be with VApp networking. Uh, so if you're not familiar with VCD and, and what you can do with it, you can create... Uh, 
isolated vApp networks, you can create vApp networks that route out to an external network, you can connect VMs directly to an external network. Um, so you have lots of, you just like normal real world networking, you can be as creative as you want to be. You can make it as simple or complex as you want to. All right, it looks like on page 34, I left one step out. Sorry about that, my bad. But that's why y'all are here, so you can, you know, learn before anybody else runs into it. Uh, so you need to assign a role when you're creating that user. Uh, so uh, we're going to give them the um, org admin role. So when you get to page 34, if you haven't gotten there already, um, when you're creating the user for the tenant three, uh, assign their role to organization administrator. And then, of course, whenever y'all do wrap up, uh, please fill out your survey and let us know uh, uh, what you liked, what you didn't like. That's how we can get better. And then, of course, uh, you know, thank y'all for coming out.